Okay, we have a rough placement of six layers now, six elements. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then we have a copy of our sketch on top of it to help show us where placement should go, right? And I'm just going to fix this middle ground a little bit more. I'm going to use Control T. Remember, this gives us all of our options. And instead of just rotating it or scaling it, I'm going to right click inside of that to get these other options. So here I can flip it horizontally. I can distort it. What I'm going to do is warp it because I want to get this rock into that place. And so it's like rolling dough. I gotta kind of push and pull from different edges. But I still want those rocks there. So warp allows you to kind of isolate. I think of it like a chicken wire cage that you're bending. And then I'm losing it a little bit behind the volcano. So that's one option. Another option is internal compositing. So I have this layer, and it's all one layer, and I know I want that, and I know I want this. But maybe I don't want them to treat the same, because this is in the background, this is in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is take my lasso, and I'm going to widely cut around that rock, duplicate it with Command-J, and then bring it above my other layers, right? So you can make as many individual selections from your, your reference as you like, because all I want is that rock. And now it's in front of the volcano. And now I can take that rock and just move it without affecting this guy. So I just turned one reference into two different references. And Christina, it's good to have you back. Yeah, if you ever get kicked out, I understand these things happen. It's happened to me. Hopefully my microphone is better for you guys today. But we're working with the technology. Okay, now I need some of my other layers. And we're just going more and more into the foreground now. So I'm going to get this big one. I haven't done the gummy bears yet. But this is my big foreground layer. And notice that that reference image is just huge. So these are high enough quality to be printed as large prints. But in order to save memory in, in photo P, I'm keeping, I'm shrinking everything down to screen resolution. But I'm still going to try to have you guys always reference, have references that are large enough. It's just a good discipline to have. I'm going to stretch this a little bit so it goes the whole way. I might warp it a little bit just to push this rock over. So it's funny, you can see how I'm not just taking the, the reference images as they are. I'm really using my sketch as a blueprint. I don't have to be a slave to it, but I have a lot of power over these different pixels. And now I'm going to rough cut it, even though I'm using a lot of these rocks, I'm not using any of that sky background. So I lasso around what I want to keep, then I hit Command J. Control J on a PC, 
and then I delete what's behind it. I have a, a good question from Luma. Would flattening the image save data? Absolutely, flattening the image will save your data, but you do not want to do that until we are finished, right? And we're always going to save a PSD that's unflattened so that we can make changes and improvements as we go. So it's better to sacrifice resolution in this case than to flatten our image as we go, because then we're really stuck. So compositing is all about having these different layers to work with. All right. Yes, go ahead. Is there a way to like make the eraser not a hundred percent opaque if I just want to like blend something together? Yes, that's actually. I have crystals to put in, but I'm not going to put them in right now, so I can show you the next thing. So I've got quite a few layers here, and you can see they all have very sharp edges. The first thing to do is to get rid of those sharp edges. So I want you to understand why your layers are placed where they are and to have them in the right order. And then I want you to go back to your very first two reference layers. So these are my very first two reference layers. And now we're going to talk about refining them. So this black here, the first thing I should do is get rid of that hard edge. And I can do that with the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool, this is really going to teach us about tool options. And this is what the practice I want. We are going to play with, always on brush mode, we're going to play with opacity, but first we're going to play with edge control, which you get with this little drop-down menu of size and hardness. We want this brush, if we're blending sky into sky, right? We want that brush to be at 0% hardness because sky does not have a hard edge. And I can make it pretty big like this, maybe a little bit smaller. And I, but I want it at 100% opacity because if I have it at anything less than 100% opacity, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> you wanna make sure you're on the right layer. If you have it on anything less than 100% opacity, that hard edge will still be there. It will be ghosted. And so first at 100% opacity, you get rid of that hard edge and then it will just be gone. Now you'll notice when you use a 0% hard eraser, it actually erases a little bit beyond your, your tool marker. It, it has a little bit of a, what I think of as like an echoing. So it kind of bites away a little bit further and further. So if I turned off the background, you can see that soft edge that that's 100% eraser takes out. And just because it's a soft edged eraser, pretty large, it's already blending in pixel by pixel with the background. Now they don't match color wise yet. They don't match in lots of ways, but that helps to refine it. Now let's go to the next layer up. Same thing for this. I want to get rid of the sky as it blends into sky. And the first thing I have to do is get rid of that hard edge with a 100% soft eraser. And maybe even a little bit smaller because I don't want to erase any of that rock. I need that to be a sharp edge. And because we're dealing at screen resolution, every pixel is going to matter. Because this brush is only 24 pixels wide. And so I am erasing 24 pixels at a time with just a soft gradated edge. Because that's the first telltale of bad compositing, is when you leave hard edges in. We'll match the lighting, we'll match the coloring, but none of that will get rid of hard edges that you don't want to be there.
So any hard edges should be on things that require a hard edge, like the edge of a rock. Next. Okay, then that was my main concern because parts of my sky that I'm trying to composite mm -hmm. don't have the same color. Yeah, this will be the perfect one to show show that. So now I have this, and I might want to keep a lot of that sky, right? So now I'm going to start with a really large 100% eraser and blend it, blend away, and it'll be kind of a beautiful mixture blending these things. Because this is lower atmosphere, right? And once I've gotten rid of the hard edge, which I now have, you can see that. Now I can change, I can play with opacity. Because I'm blending sky into sky, clouds into clouds, and they can be transparent. So if I change the opacity now to about half, and I erase again with that soft edge, it will just keep gradating it down. And the more I hit it, the more it will take away. And revealing that, that mountain peak in the background there. Because then when I get to my, my volcano, I could do the same thing, get rid of all those hard edges. But I also know I don't want any of that blue ocean, right? So what options do I have? Well, the most direct option, especially if we're working at screen resolution, is just to zoom in close so you can actually see the pixels. And to use your lasso. And if you want really sharp edges, you just take chunks out, right? If you want a slightly soft edge, you can feather it. So if I feather it here in the tool options for the lasso by one pixel, that means that it will gradate one pixel on the edge of my selection in all directions. So one pixel doesn't sound like a lot, but now you see that slight softness. And that's good for the middle ground for this one. It's not good for the foreground. For the foreground, I don't want any feathering. And so this is a refined cutout. And I like to do it in little chunks so I can stay zoomed in. And then I just use two fingers to move around it. You can also use the hand tool. You can also use the space bar and just move around with your mouse as you're holding down the space bar. So as you're zoomed in, you can do that. And then I use my, my lasso with, with these options. So if I ever click anywhere, it subtracts it. And you'll get little lingering blue. I'm not too worried about that yet because it's already kind of gradated down. And I can also cut into this because it's organic and kind of make it my own shape if I want to. So I just like to cut out section by section, hit delete. It's feathering one pixel, which kind of matches what's behind it. The color doesn't match yet, the lighting doesn't match yet, but right now I'm just trying to get a, a better cutout. than that rough one we started with. And this is where having less resolution, lower resolution, makes it a little bit more forgiving. We have fewer pixels we have to worry about deleting. But it also makes it a little less detailed. Now, we talked about kind of professional compositing last week. 
and especially for feature films,